Hello, my name is Russ Porteous and I'm the CEO of Firewise. I'm with Zoran Stelger, who's an Applications Manager within uh, Johnson Controls. First thing, Zoran, what is an Applications Manager? Okay, so I assist our clients and consultants in design of our products, both uh, new sites and upgrade parts on existing sites. Okay, so if I've got an existing building or a new building, mm -hmm. and I've got a problem with my fire detection alarm system, and I'm looking for a, um, advice and support, I'd come to you? Correct, correct, and I'll give you a solution. Uh, that will be compliant and uh, available through our product range for an upgrade path or a brand new building. So if I'm reaching out to Johnson Controls, what's the best way to get in contact with you and probably you've probably got peers in your team? Correct, I do. So through our sales staff yep. who I assist um, pre-sales Yeah, right. and obviously um, on our website, um, you can find me on our website through johnsoncontrols.com. So today we're looking at something pretty new and innovative Correct. that I'm excited Correct. about, yep. and that's the QE20. So to see a completely new generation of emergency warning system in Australia is really exciting. Yep. And there's one key feature I'm super pumped about that you've retained, and that's the coloured buttons. Oh, thank you. So perhaps, Lauren, you could tell us a little bit about the QE20 yep. and um, why it's different and what okay. makes it special in the Australian market. So, so what the biggest change is, the, the codes obviously change. The change now, we go to AS4428 uh, part 16, right. which is what the QE20 is okay. to so and Is this a product for the global market or just exclusive for Australia and no, New Zealand? No, so this is, is specifically for Australia and New Zealand. So that's a massive is, investment then? It is. It's yeah. a huge investment. Because we're not a big, you know, we're not a massive nation. No, we're nation. not. But um, we're, with the QE90, we were very successful with that product. But now, obviously, you know, the investment hopefully will pay off. And I think we've come up with a very good product. So give me a couple of quick insights as to what some of the innovation in the QE20. <clears throat> so the biggest change is, obviously, we've moved to more of a style, um, as you said, tactile um, display here. Um, the biggest thing between a AS2220 system and 4428 part 16, sorry for all those numbers, That's that, okay. is obviously the change from power supply is now your primary power source. So it's a 27 amp power supply. Correct. So before and I think it used to run on, when a, a QE90 or any of was used to run, it used to run on batteries because of the Correct. current demand. Correct. But now um, it can run on the power supply, is that right? Correct. So basically the power supply was a 6 or a 12 amp power supply in the QE90. So now we've moved to a 27 amp power supply because the, in the 2020 system, the power supply was purely there to look after the batteries, not to run the system. So the batteries was the main primary power supply. Yeah, for and batteries used to be massive. Are they the same they for this? They still will be because your, oh, backup, right. your backup is still backup. Okay, so do, but does a Class D amplifier, which is what's used in these systems, Correct. is that um, it doesn't have the same current draw? They are more efficient, yep. but the, the, the system's getting larger. Yeah. So with the... Um, the intelligibility of systems with higher end speakers, uh, larger wattages, uh, more density of speakers to get the intelligibility, you're going to require more. Yeah, speaker amplitude. density is a very important factor when designing intelligibility into an emergency warning system. Correct. So um, there's one more feature that you have not suggested or not talked about, and that is on-site configuration. Do you want to talk briefly about that, Zoran? So on-site configuration, these systems with, the, with our previous product um, they were a chip, now yep. it's all direct programming. The contractor will have access to the actual system to do their own programming. Depending on the size of the system, say there's very complex programming in some of the hospitals and shopping centres, we'll have a look at working with them on working out a solution for some of those complex um, matrices for those installations. One of the things that really excited me when I learned about this was the fact that this, because this is field programmable, if you've got a multi-storey high-rise with staged um, occupancy, then you can configure this system um, for staged occupancy. So that enables um, the builder to access the operation of the system or to, to leverage the operation of the system in stages. So you're not just having to configure the system you know, every time you want to release another three floors. This enables us to do that in real time Correct. without having the delay of changing computer chips, chips physical chips inside the, the uh, EWIS panel. So Zoran, thank you so much for sharing no us Appreciate a little it. bit about the QE20. No I'm problem. really excited to see how that um, lands in the market and if, if the QE9 is any indication, it's going to be a great success. Thank you very much.